Hey there YouTube, Wrestling Optimus here, back with another action figure review. It's Survivor Series, technically one of the big four pay-per-views, but it sure doesn't feel like it. There's been virtually no build, and zero titles are on the line. The tagline should have been bragging rights instead of the best of the best. Still, the card looks promising, so I'm optimistic. As always, if you're new here, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more pro wrestling and action figure content. Now, we're headed into the Thunderdome! So for our recap and review, let's take it over to the action figures. First up, it wouldn't be a pre-show without Confused R-Truth. Except tonight, he doesn't know who we're celebrating. He thinks this is all for the gobbledygooker, so he brings out the infamous giant turkey. Suddenly, Akira Tozawa appears, only to get knocked out. Truth turns around into a roll-up by the Gooker, and we have a new 24-7 champion. Truth gives chase while screaming, When I catch you, I'm gonna make you extra crispy! The Battle Royal mentioned in my predictions video includes Mr. Money in the Bank, The Miz, his tag team partner, John Morrison, Jeff Hardy, Shinsuke Nakamura, Ricochet, Apollo Crews, Robert Roode, Dolph Ziggler, Elias, Chad Gable, Angel Garza, Kalisto, Umberto Carrillo, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander, and Murphy with Rey and Dominic Mysterio. Wow, that's a lot of wasted talent just shoved on the kickoff show. We get plenty of lucha things in a cool sequence between Rey Mysterio and Kalisto, followed by a similar moment between real-life cousins Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo. The final four comes down to Jeff Hardy, Chad Gable, the Miz, and Dominic Mysterio. After a fairly entertaining match, unfortunately, we get the laziest ending possible. The Miz avoids elimination by technicality, then sneaks back in once Dominic eliminates Gable and thinks he's won. Yawn. Also, does that count as a point for Raw? I'll say no. The main show opens with the Men's Survivor Series elimination match. AJ Styles, accompanied by his associate Omos, leads out Team Raw, consisting of Riddle, Keith Lee with brand new significantly upgraded music, Braun Strowman, and Sheamus. Team SmackDown consists of Jey Uso, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, King Corbin, and Otis. KO seems extra pumped, unlike Rollins who still seems rattled by what happened with Murphy on SmackDown. Seth demands to be tagged in, then simply kneels, so Sheamus brogue kicks him in the face to get the first elimination. Um, okay. Otis and Keith Lee square off in a battle of the beef. Then, after KO has a one-man stunner party, Styles eliminates him with a phenomenal forearm. It only gets worse for the blue brand, as Riddle eliminates King Corbin with a floating bro, and Braun Strowman eliminates Otis by reversing the Caterpillar into a running power slam. Jey Uso finds himself in a 5-on-1 disadvantage as Paul Heyman watches on from the back. Jey tries an Uso splash, but Keith Lee catches him in mid-air and in one swift motion flips him up into an earth-shattering spirit bomb. Raw gets the clean sweep and picks up their first point of the night. All five men celebrate by doing their signature poses together in a really cool looking final shot. Big E joins his New Day brothers in possibly the coolest entrance attire I've ever seen. They come out in brightly colored Gears of War armor. Even Francesca the Trombone has been turned into a chainsaw gun. Along with Batista, the New Day and these outfits will be downloadable content in the next game. They cut a brief promo before they're joined by the Street Profits for a pre-match dance party. The match itself is fantastic, as you'd expect from these guys. They hit all their signature moves, including the Midnight Hour, the Trouble in Paradise, the Anointment, and the Cash Out, but it's a double team blockbuster that gives the Street Profits the win and the first point for SmackDown. After the match, both teams embrace in a show of respect. Sami Zayn comes out alone, while Bobby Lashley is joined by the entire Hurt Business, which Sami rightfully complains about to the ref. He hangs in there with the Almighty, and even finds time to trash talk with MVP and company at ringside in a failed attempt to force a DQ. Just like a few years ago, Lashley gives Sammy vertigo partway through the match, but thankfully he recovers and continues. When Zayn innocently tries to leave, MVP trips him and illegally throws him back into the ring where Bobby applies the hurt lock and gets the submission victory. I demand justice for Sammy. 
Jimmy Uso joins his brother outside Roman's private locker room following Team SmackDown's loss in the Survivor Series match. Reigns claims that Jay's teammates no longer respect him or their family, so Jay no longer has a seat at the table. Roman orders both Usos to leave his arena. The women's champions are next in the much-anticipated rematch between Asuka and Sasha Banks. It's a great back-and-forth battle with a heavy focus on submissions and strikes. Towards the end, there's a series of near falls. Then, when Asuka goes for a running hip attack, Sasha catches her and rolls her up for the win and another SmackDown point. Cameras find new 24-7 champion, the gobbledygooker, backstage where he comes across a pile of bird seed. While he feasts on it, Tazawa pops out of a storage bin with a ninja referee and rolls up the turkey to win the belt. Then, our truth sneaks up from behind and clocks Tazawa with a bag of bird seed to reclaim his baby for the 45th time. He runs off, wishing the gobbledygooker a happy 30th anniversary. Never change, Truth. Up next is the Women's Survivor Series Elimination Match. The tag team champions, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, lead out Team Raw, which includes their recent target of table-based bullying, Lana, and oddball tag team, Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce. Former SmackDown Women's Champion, Bayley, leads out Bianca Belair, Natalya, and the Riot Squad. It's blatantly obvious, based on their entrances alone, that SmackDown is the more cohesive team, entering the ring in almost unison. To that point, they use fluid tags and double teams to gain an early advantage. Meanwhile, after being told to stay out of the match, Lana tags herself in and manages to put up a good fight against Natalya. But it doesn't matter. When she tags out, she's humiliated and forced to stand on the ring steps by herself as Peyton Royce suplexes Bailey onto a pile of women from both teams. Peyton and Bailey battle back into the ring, where Royce hits the deja vu and shockingly eliminates SmackDown's captain. She quickly taps out to the sharpshooter though, before Natty is eliminated by a woman's right. Lacey Evans also nearly eliminates Bianca Belair with an incredible top rope Spanish fly, but it's broken up by the Riot Squad. Ruby taps out to the Kirafuda Clutch, sending Liv into a rage and helping her to eliminate Lacey with a crucifix pin. But it's not enough for Nia, who eliminates her with a Samoan drop. SmackDown's last woman, Bianca Belair, comes in and also gets caught in the Kirafuda Clutch, but she makes it to the rope. Shayna gets DQ'd when she doesn't release the hold after a five count. Bianca and Nia brawl around the ring and get double counted out, meaning your winner is... Lana? That's actually what a lot of people thought would happen. After weeks of torture, she's vindicated as the sole survivor. Honestly, I don't think that was worth it. In our main event, Roman Reigns takes on Drew McIntyre. Both entrances are great. Then they start with a face-to-face -face stare down while holding up their respective title belts. This definitely had a big fight feel. Roman dominates early, but grows increasingly frustrated the more Drew keeps fighting. McIntyre makes a valiant effort to come back, but Reigns seemingly has a counter for everything. Even when Drew hits the Future Shock DDT, Roman kicks out. The closest Drew comes is when he reverses a spear into a Kimura armlock, but that only angers Roman more. He puts McIntyre through the announcer's table and spears him through a barricade. Back in the ring, Reigns hits another spear, yet somehow Drew kicks out. When McIntyre finally hits the Claymore, he also knocks Roman into the referee, preventing the count. Jay Uso comes down and hits Drew with a super kick while Roman hits him with a low blow and a Superman punch before locking in the guillotine just as a new ref appears. Drew passes out and Roman is declared the winner. He embraces Jay at the top of the ramp and holds up his Universal Championship. That means Raw and SmackDown tied at three wins apiece in the final tally, which they didn't keep track of so it will probably never be mentioned again. The blue brand won both the men's and women's title matches, while the red brand won both Survivor Series matches. Good old WWE 50-50 booking. Either way, that's the end of the actual card for tonight, however, the pay-per-view isn't over. Mike Rome welcomes us to The Undertaker's final farewell and 30th anniversary celebration. It begins with a parade of legends and some of Taker's best friends in the industry, specifically members of the infamous backstage group, The Bone Street Crew. There's Shane McMahon, The Big Show, JBL, Jeff Hardy, with The Undertaker's symbol painted on his face, Mick Foley, 
The Godfather, Phineas and Henry Godwin, Savio Vega, Rikishi, Kevin Nash, Booker T, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, Triple H, and of course, Kane. R.I.P. Yokozuna. There's a brief video package, then everyone magically disappears. Vince is standing in the ring alone as he officially declares, Tonight we say goodbye. Then he introduces the man of the hour himself, The Undertaker. A pair of Tesla coils literally plays The Undertaker's theme with lightning, followed by a massive fire display. Then, through the smoke, the dead man appears. His entrance takes approximately 50 years, and culminates in chants of Undertaker. He says for 30 years he's made that slow walk and laid others to rest, but now the time has come to let the Undertaker rest in peace. For one final time, he does his kneeling pose as a hologram of Paul Bearer is projected in front of him. A gong rings out ten times, and he ends with his signature throat-cutting hand gesture as he exits the ring. That was really nice, but such a shame that it couldn't be in front of fans. Taker deserved that. Overall, that was a pretty good pay-per-view. It was certainly better than it had any right to be given the horrible build and zero stakes. Still, the wrestling was really good throughout, and there were plenty of fun moments in between. But no matter how good it turned out, with only bragging rights on the line, there was always going to be a ceiling. So yeah, WWE managed to pull a decent Survivor Series out of their ass again. But at some point, if they keep forgetting about this supposed Big Four pay-per-view, the fans will too. I say, rather than slapping something together last minute around Thanksgiving time each year, let's just axe the whole thing and start a new tradition. Before I wrap up, congratulations to my friend Lauren for finally dethroning the champ in our predictions league. Specifically, she got Bobby Lashley and Sasha Banks right to get her second win of the season. No, I'm not mad about it or anything. Alright, that'll do it for Survivor Series. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I'll be back on Thursday with an action figure review of AEW Dynamite, so stop back then. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to do all that normal YouTube stuff. Smash the like button, share with any wrestling or action figure fans you may know, subscribe to the channel, and spread the word. You can also talk to me over on Twitter, at PSUOptimist, or... See all my best figure photography over on Instagram, at Wrestling Optimus. If you haven't seen my latest unboxing video, you can check that out right here. But until next time, I've been Wrestling Optimus, and I'll catch you later.